Hello, it is the Friday Talkie. Um, Atari ST guy did an open tag video, which I found very interesting, so I'm going to answer that. Um, this is described as a depressing gamer's tag. <laughs> I suppose it could be depressing, depending on how you look at it. It's, it's certainly quite serious. But I found it interesting, and so I'm going to respond to it. Do you ever feel like you want to do away with gaming? No, not ever. I know for some people it, gaming is possible to get carried away with and it can wreck your life. No, um, absolutely not. I don't... There are times I just don't feel like gaming and I, I just I don't do any for a while. More in fact with the retro gaming than the modern stuff. There, there'll be times I'll think, I can't be bothered to do any videos, I'm not in the mood, I'm, I'm fed up with it, and I'll just turn my back on the whole thing for a little while, a few days, maybe a week, something like that. But in that time I'm still playing PS3 or whatever, um, and just playing absolutely for the fun of it and for no other reason. I've never ever wanted to stop gaming, it's never ever stopped being fun. Have you ever felt bad for staying in and playing games? No. What is this outside of which you speak? <laughs> Getting nerdy here. I don't get out a lot. <laughs> That's not true. I mean, we, we get, we're going out on holiday. We're going down south to a place called Worthing next week. Well, Sunday, in fact. And a lot of time will be spent outdoors. I I go wander into town a bit several times, a couple of times a week, something like that, just to get out of the house. But I'm I'm not an outdoorsy person. I used to go fishing back when I lived in Milton Keynes, but I don't do that here. I, I don't like the fisheries around here that much. There there aren't any waters I want to fish. Um, I sometimes I go out and I get on my bike and have a cycle around, and you'd have seen the videos, maybe if you're aware of my other channel. Uh, but no, I'm actually, I mean, when I come to think about it, most of my gaming is done at night, so playing video games isn't keeping me from going out and enjoying the summer weather and such like, though it's been raining today, because I'm doing it at night, so really it's not a factor at all, so no, the answer to that is no, I never feel bad about gaming when I could be going out. Do you feel guilty for spending so much time playing games? No. I don't. It's fun. If all the things that I need to do have been done, why should I feel guilty for doing something that I enjoy? I, I see no reason to be guilty or feel guilty for it. Sometimes it can cause problems and that that is covered in later questions. But do I ever feel guilty? No, not at all. I don't see why anyone should ever feel guilty for doing something they enjoy. So long as it's not harming anyone else, so long as it's not damaging to their life, what's to be guilty about? Has your love of games ever put a strain on your relationship or job? Now that is where, uh, you know, as I said, that sort of thing is covered in the next question, and there is, yes. Um, Job-wise, no, not really. The internet has put a strain on my previous jobs. Um, I, I had a job way back around 2000, and I had only just got into the internet and it's safe to say I was very addicted to IRC chat and I would be staying up very late and then struggling to get up and get to work and that, that caused me to rub yeah, that caused me some trouble uh, relationship wise there have been occasions where I, I, I buy a new game and I'll sit up here and I'll play it for hours and hours and hours and hours I am fortunate in having a wonderful wife who is not backward in coming forward and saying get your ass down here and spend some time with me because you've been up there too long. Andrea is not at all shy about saying what she thinks and I do as I'm told. <laughs> no, I, I do take it seriously. If, if, if Andrea says, you know, come on, you need to spend some time with me, I'm like, yeah, okay. Because, you know, I think if... You have to pay attention, you know, if your wife, partner, whatever, is saying something, you've got to listen. If they're saying this is a problem or whatever, pay attention. And I do, because otherwise then you do have a problem. Has there ever been a time where games have helped me in a situation? Yes. 
Way back in 1994, I split up with a girlfriend who I'd been with for about five years, lived with for about a year. And I, I was just gutted, falling apart, completely falling apart. And it came to like Christmas Day. And I was just an absolute wreck. But I had just before Christmas got myself, it was like my Christmas present to myself. I got a 32X to go with my Mega Drive. And I'd got Virtua Racing and Star Wars Arcade and Doom. And I just played them all day, non-stop. And it was the only thing that kept me from falling apart. You know, Christmas Day on my own after five years with this girl was it, it was horrendous. It was it was the most horrible Christmas I could imagine, and so playing games was just distract myself, and it didn't stop me feeling sad by any means. But it gave me something to do, something to focus on, try and shut out as much of I as I could of what was making me miserable. So yeah, help me in that way. How 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 it would have been without gaming? I don't know. I don't care to think about. I got through it, you know. Obviously, moved on to vastly better things. And you look back and you think, better off by far. You know, it was one of those episodes of my life, a learning experience, and I'm much happier to be where I am now. I have to say. Okay, I do seem to have a little bit more time to play with. That 15 minutes certainly doesn't hurt, does it? Um, so I will talk about what I was originally going to talk about, and that is the effect current generation gaming has on your perception of the previous generations, or how to explain. I look at certain generations of games in a particular way, like 8-bit gaming. I can play 8-bit computer games, not so much the 8-bit console games, but things like the Spectrum and the Amstrad and, and the Atari. And the fact that they're primitive and look kind of crappy compared to modern standards doesn't bother me. It's like, this is how they are, this is how they're meant to look they're meant to be that way and that I don't feel the restrictions in gameplay or graphics or whatever due to the hardware because that's how that that's how they were meant to be with uh, god I'm not explaining myself at all well 8 bit and 16 bit games I can play them and how old they are and how dated they are doesn't seem to matter in fact I'm not even aware that they're dated that's just how that kind of game is meant to be to my mind but then I come to early 3D, and uh, this comes from a conversation, a brief conversation in comments with KLL 360 about six months ago, and I said I was going to pick this up and run with it, and didn't. But it has been on my mind ever since. PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, Atari Jaguar, 3DO, they were cutting edge. They were a whole new generation, something really new compared to what had gone before. They were taking a completely different direction from what had gone before. But have you ever sat and played, say, a PS1 game and thought, that actually looks a god-awful mess? You know, it's full of smeared textures and really blocky polygons. And I mean, obviously, they it was new technology. A lot of the time they hadn't learned how to push the hardware. But if you're really honest, you had to use your imagination to realise, to, to, for it to look like what it was supposed to look like. You know, that was a tank in front of you and not a pile of cardboard boxes kind of thing. And when compared to the previous 16-bit generation, Sonic the Hedgehog looked fantastic. Mario Kart looked fantastic. That, that, the cream of the crop of 16-bit games, you could play them and your jaw would drop, you'd be like, wow, that looks great. And then you play a PS1 game and it's like, that actually looks a bit shit. Daytona on the Saturn, I think, personally, looks horrible. Really, really hideously awful. Where a Mega Drive game, yes, it's not 3D, it's 2D, but it really looks nice. But, having said all of that, I can play a PS1 game quite happily with the mindset that this is retro. It's okay for it to look pretty god-awful. But... I can play a PS2 game, which looks better than a PS1 game, but all I'm aware of is it doesn't look as good as a PS3, because in my mind the PS2 is still current, you, they're still selling them, you can still buy new games for them. It's current technology, currently available in the shops, but it really looks kind of rough, because I'm used to the PS3 now. 
and that's kind of weird. I don't really know what I'm trying to say. It's like the latest generation makes the previous generation look rough, but then when you go back a generation further to the PS1, a lot of PS1 stuff looks rough compared to the Mega Drive, and yet the 8-bit stuff to me all looks great. I don't really know what I'm trying to say. I think I'm just waffling and going blah and, and thinking aloud really. I'm not trying to make a, a... I am trying to make a point but I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'm going to shut up now about that. I, tag time I think, yes. I am stupid. I mean shout out time. Okay, yeah, here we go. Okay then. This week's shout out goes to Kill Gruz. Now he has got a very, very well defined channel here. You look at his channel, you know exactly what you're going to get. And what you're going to get is black and white Apple Mac SE games. And having recently been playing around with my SE, I find all of this very interesting. Because I have only got one game for my SE. But I do like coming along to this channel and looking at the games that you can find on the Mac, on the early black and white Mac. For the longest time, I didn't even think you could play games on the system. But here we have loads. Um, Operation Tsunami, Lunar Phantom, Wave 15, Cyber Blast, Load Runner, the Arkanoid. There is lots here, and he's putting them up on a regular basis. 20 hours goes, 6 days, 1 week, 2 weeks, 2 weeks, 2 weeks, 3 weeks, 3... You know, plenty of content here. All great. And Coleco Video Game System, plug and play, Activision plug and play, Miss Pac-Man collection, screwing around with GTA 4, never a bad thing. Yes, I like this channel a lot, let's have a listen. And there we go buffering, good old YouTube. This is Operation Tsunami from 1991 by Mark Fong for Hustler. <laughs> Some people consider this a sequel to the game The Big One. Right? Yeah. You see, I like his style. He's very fluid and natural, and, and it, it, his presentation and such like, it flows, and I like that. It's very easy to watch and listen, and informative, enjoyable. Highly recommended if you're remotely interested in the black and white Apple Mac SE or I guess Macs around that era. Kill Gruz. There will be a link down below the video thing, you know, in the usual place. Check him out. I think well worth a look. Okay, there we go. Um, before I go, I know I've not been putting up many videos for the past week. Uh, that is because Andrea is on holiday and I'm having a life with my wife. Um, we're going away on Sunday for a week, so there will be even fewer videos, like none. I will be able to keep up with comments and stuff, because I'll have my laptop with me with mobile broadband. So comments and stuff, I, I will be able to see them, and probably will be replying to some, as I tend to do. And no doubt when we get back, I will be uploading a video of the holiday, which will go on to my other channel. If you're not aware of that channel, it is Benway's World. To, you know, there's links to it all over this channel. Check that out if you want to see the holiday video when we get back. I think that covers everything. So, uh yeah thank you for watching i'm probably blurred here now yeah cheers this and videos of other retro games in my collection and a video of my console and computer collection can be found on my youtube channel along with a link to my website retrogamingcollector.com so take a look at that if you've got nothing better to do thank you for watching <laughs>